Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about wicked limits. Wicked is a term that I like to use to describe limits that may seem tricky, advanced, or quite confusing. And what I mean by that is suppose we're trying to apply limit laws to solve a limit, and one of the functions, or both of the functions, is discontinuous at the x value in question. It's tempting to just say that the entire limit does not exist, but that's not always true. In these situations, we have to analyze one-sided limits to determine what's happening on both sides of the x value in question. That will help us determine the correct limit. Let's dive in and look at some examples. Suppose we have two graphs, f of x and g of x, and they're both piecewise functions. And we need to find the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches negative one. Well, we know from limit laws that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So we can separate this into the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one times the limit of g of x as x approaches negative one. But if we look at f of x as x approaches negative one, the limit does not exist. And if we look at g of x as x approaches negative one, the limit is zero. So what's the solution here? If we multiply does not exist times zero, do we get zero or do we get does not exist? And so you see, we have a dilemma here. And that's why this limit is wicked. In order to solve a problem like this, where one of the limits does not exist, we need to look at the one-sided limits. If the one-sided limits match, we know the limit exists. If the one-sided limits do not match, then the limit does not exist. So let's start by looking at the limit of f of x as x goes to negative one from the left times the limit of g of x as x goes to negative one from the left. The limit of f of x as x goes to negative one from the left is positive one. And the limit of g of x as x goes to negative one from the left is zero. Then we can multiply these together. One times zero equals zero. Now let's look at the limit of f of x as x goes to negative one from the right times the limit of g of x as x goes to negative one from the right. Well, the limit of f of x as x goes to negative one from the right is negative one. And the limit of g of x as x goes to negative one from the right is zero. When we multiply those together, we get zero. Now you can see both the left and right hand limits match. That means the limit exists. So we have the solution to the problem. The limit of f of x times g of x as x goes to negative one equals zero. Let's do another example. Suppose we need to find the limit of g of x minus f of x minus two as x goes to one. At first glance, what may seem especially confusing about this limit is the f of x minus two. Therefore, I'm gonna call this limit wicked. wicked. However, it's not that tricky. All we need to do is break it down. Remember, f of x minus two just means we have the f of x function shifted two units to the right. Remember, the limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. So this gives us the limit of g of x as x goes to one minus the limit of f of x minus two as x goes to one. The limit of g of x as x goes to one does not exist and the limit of f of x minus two as x goes to one also does not exist. So this gives us does not exist minus does not exist. Does that equal zero or does not exist or something else? And this is another reason why this limit is wicked. So what we need to do is break this problem into one-sided limits. So here's the strategy. We need to find the limit of g of x minus f of x minus two as x goes to one from the left. Then we'll find the limit of g of x minus f of x minus two as x goes to one from the right. Then we'll see if the limits match. The limit of g of x as x goes to one from the left is one. The limit of f of x minus two as x goes to one from the left is also one. And one minus one is zero. Now let's look at the limit of g of x as x goes to one from the right. And that is negative two. Then let's find the limit of f of x minus two as x goes to one from the right. And that's negative one. Negative two minus negative one is negative one. Here you can see that the left and right hand limits of the problem do not match. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Let's look at one more example. The limit of g of f of x as x goes to two. Remember, we need to separate this using a limit law that says the limit of a composition is the limit of the outer function as x approaches the limit of the inner function. 
So first, we need to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. As we look at the graph of f, you can see that as x approaches 2, f of x approaches a height of 1. But here's the trick that makes this limit wicked. As x approaches 2, f of x is always a little bit greater than 1 and a little bit greater than one corresponds to one from the right. We have to make sure that we see that as x approaches two, f of x is always a little bit bigger than one, and that corresponds to one from the right. We need to do this because the g of x function is discontinuous at x equals one, and because of this, we're going to be finding a one-sided limit. So now we can find the limit of g of x as x approaches one from the right. And as we trace the graph, we can see that this limit is negative two, and that's the solution. So I hope that you now feel a little more confident with these tricky limits. Remember, when you're solving a limit that involves a limit law, and at least one of the functions has a discontinuity at the x value in question, then you often need to analyze the one-sided limits, and that will lead you to the correct solution. With limits of compositions of functions, pay special attention to the limit of the inside function to determine if x is approaching a value from the right or from the left. Just keep on practicing, and that's how you rock calculus!